We'll open up with Coach <coughs> and thought his remarks. We might as well take questions with players only, please, for the first bit. We'll get them out there for practice and take your time with Coach. We appreciate the, appreciate the coverage you guys are giving our program, especially the players, trying to continue to connect you guys as well as our fan base, our student body with our players. It's always a challenge of the uh, first year team. You know, we really want our fans to be sitting there on November 9th and already kind of know something about our players instead of scrambling to look at the roster. So, a uh, guy to my left, Jace, somebody I have a lot of respect for. Um, he's a really good basketball player. Uh, had a lot of battles. Beat me one time on five shots. Um, but Jace is somebody um, that we definitely wanted to re-recruit when we got here. Somebody that from afar we always had a lot of respect for. Did some great things with Shaka. Uh, basketball kind of speaks for itself. One of the best shooters in college basketball. And Jace and I share a vision that this year could be much more about shooting than him. He's a complete player. Um, secondly, you know, I've always kind of had a soft spot in my heart. I think uh, with college basketball, to me, the senior is a special part of college basketball, the guy that's grinding for four and sometimes five years. Um, college basketball has a lot of great things to it, the one and dones, the NBA relationships, all this, but there's something about the seniors that has been and always will be sacred in our program. And this year we have kind of one of those rosters that has all the asterisks next to it. You can't really tell you know, who's who and who's got an extra year, who's got the COVID year, but we know this. This is Jace's last year of college basketball. Um, he's a senior. You know, we can't, we can't wait to all the moments along the way, whether it be senior night later on or hopefully making a deep run in this year's tournament. Uh, but excited to coach Jace uh, this, this year. He's also got me hooked up with my current barber that I, I really appreciate. Guy to my right, I know a little bit, so if anybody has a question about him, I can certainly help as well. Yeah, that was for sure probably my most complete game. Um, felt the healthiest around that time. So I knew I wanted to come out there and, and make an impact as much as I could the minutes that I was uh, that I was given that day. And what was the second part of your question again? Just how long was that for you, you know, coming back from injury after you went through um, playing such a big game like that? And also, what was it like competing against those Texas Tech teams that play very physical? Yeah. So, I mean, the all last year was a grind for me. Some of the darkest times of my life, just as far as trying to get back on the court. But um, we have a great trainer and Warren, um, allowing me to to get back on as, as quickly as I can. And playing against Tech is always a challenge. Um, they're always a team that was going to fight to the very end. So we end up always playing them in the tournament as well. So uh, we took a couple L's to them. So it was pretty personal just to go out there and play as best as we could. Um, and it came down to the very end, like it always does with us. So it was a great game. Bob in front. Chase, take us through some of that. Because, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty profound statement that you know, was some of your darkest times. And, and being on the other side of it now, what did you learn going through that? Because I would imagine there was a frustration even when you were playing, yeah. knowing you couldn't do everything for them. Yeah, I mean, you want to go out there and play at, at your highest level. Um, at the best of your capabilities and, you know, sometimes feeling like I had one and a half legs, you know, not being able to do everything that I can. It was pretty tough, but you have to you have to bet on yourself and you have to continue to grind, continue to work. And that's all I could do is just make sure that, you know, I'm putting my best effort. Um, a lot of my teammates and my coaching staff last year were selling a lot of positive into me as well. So I just trust the process and continue to grind out. Yeah, I mean, those, those those thoughts always creep in sometimes, but I just try to do my best to, to empty those and just understand that, you know, the mind likes to play games, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, so I know that, you know, the man upstairs has a bigger plan for me, and regardless of what happens, I just want to put my best effort and let whatever happens happen. Brian in front. What's up? First off, you're looking pretty good. You look appreciate it. Coach, you're doing all right. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. I, I know you want to be more than just the, the corner shooter. Yeah. Right? So, but what does that mean in terms of off-season work and what, what are you trying to do mm -hmm. to, to be more? Well, one of the the good things about 
having Coach Beer recruit me back here is that he also recruited me coming in uh, as a freshman, like you know, in, in high school, and they were able to see my game at a at a whole different, uh, at a complete level where I was better. doing. I know. I know. <laughs> well, I was doing multiple things, not just catching and shooting, but um, Coach Beard is always is telling me he sees me as a complete player, not just a catch and shoot guy. And, you know, having a head coach that instills that confidence into you just wants, makes you want to work even harder and harder. So this whole offseason, it's just been about me being able to play off my shot fake. And with this motion offense, it's allowing me to move and, and screen and be more of a dynamic player. Yeah. Do you think you were fully over that even by the Big 12 tournament? Um, I mean, I try to, to make sure that I have a have a short memory when it comes to bad situations or bad games. So we have to, uh, you know, your next game is your most important. So that's the mindset that we, we had. And, you know, it showed that Texas Tech game. Um, so being a, one of the older guys, more experienced guys, especially being one who's been playing in the Big 12 for all my years here, um, just kind of helping the guys understand what they're getting into, especially coming to a school like Texas where that target's on your back. And they won't truly understand until they experience it, but just giving them a picture ahead of time is, is something that we've been trying to do. Um, and Coach Beard and Avery, we all we know better than anybody, better than any, any of the transfers, you know, how brutal of a league this can get. So just giving our best every single practice and training hard is just something that we've been doing to prepare for that. Chase, do you have a question for Avery? <laughs> Avery. Who cuts his hair? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to cut that? Um, will you ever cut that is the first question. Yeah, I will. Um, it gets in the way a lot, but I'm currently engaged, so it's going to have to wait until after the big day. So oh, okay, okay. Once we're hit, she can't leave. So once I cut my hair, it's all good. <laughs> whenever, whenever she says. Well, yeah, kind of, but whenever um, basketball is up for me and, you know, summers are uh, kind of free, you know, we grind all year. So to, to take a weekend for a wedding isn't, isn't uh, ideal. So. Brian, so Avery, tell, tell us the mountain of grief you no doubt took when you told your Texas Tech people where you were transferring because I'm sure that they had an opinion on it. Yeah, um, you know, I only talked to a select few people um, back there when I decided to enter the transfer portal um, because I initially didn't know where I was going to go. You know, it's one of those things where you go into the portal, um, kind of just feel around, see what it's about. And, uh, you know, the second my name was in the portal, you know, a familiar contact showed up on my phone. So we had some good long talks, um, you know, about me as a person, about what I can do here. And then, you know, it was just kind of decided uh, that I was going to come here to Austin. And so, you know, back to who I told, you know, I really only talked to Coach Adams um, and Kirby Holcutt. Those were the two guys that I feel, um, you know, deserved an explanation from me on my behalf. And then, um, you know, other people that I knew and I respected, if they asked, you know, I would just tell them, you know, it's what I thought was right, but that was about it. So you, I mean, this, this may, this, you don't owe anything to anybody, but you felt like you needed to tell Coach Adams and Kirby to their face? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. I, um, well, I actually did it over the phone because I was, I was back home. It was right when, you know, school had ended and we could go back home. Um, and, you know, it was a chance for me to sit down with my parents and discuss the whole process because it was new to us. I've never transferred colleges before or even thought about it. Um, so, you know, yeah, definitely, you know, I have a lot of love for Coach Adams and Kirby. I spent four years, you know, with them. That was a lot of valuable time, you know, a regular person's college career. So I definitely owed it, you know, to them. And, you know, they deserved it, and I respect them greatly. Ross in front. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably feeling the healthiest I've been since I got injured. Um, 
I, the one thing I want to prove to everybody is that I'm a winner. I want to win more than anything right now. Um, I think I've shown the country what I can do shooting the ball. Um, definitely being a player, uh, showing the country that, you know, I'm more than just a shooter is something that we've been emphasizing this whole offseason. But more than anything at this point, I mean, I feel like I've done everything that I can individually. Um, of course, I want to take strides, and there's always going to be individual goals that each player wants to try to get, uh, to, get to. But more than anything, I, I, I want to be able to win and get past the first round in the, in the tournament. <laughs> Oh man, nothing's changed really. Just grit, hard work, um, the little things. You know, leave leave the bigger tasks to you know Jace and Drew and Courtney when it comes to you know the the points and all that stuff. You know, that's not what I'm here for. You know, just like Jace said, we all have a job to help to help this program win ball games, and so I'm just going to do the same thing I've always done, and that's and really that's really it. And then what's what? Tell us about your relationship. Oh man! What you can't tell. Yeah, um, man, he's he's the dude. Uh, he took a chance on me coming out of high school. I was, you know, just like a 165 pound white boy. You know, had no had no business truly being there, but he saw something in me and he took a chance on me at Tech. And so, you know, when he came here, it was my turn to return the favor. Um, you know, take a chance on him in a place that I have no idea about. It's uncomfortable, so. Um, you know, so far it's it's paid tenfold. So you know, I couldn't be happier in a place like this. Jonathan, in the back first, and Jeff, uh, Adria, what has that process been like? You know, getting to know you know Jace and Courtney and the guys that you've been competing so hard against for all these years. Now you're there on the same side. Yeah. Um, when when I first decided to come here, that was one of the big things. My dad actually talked about is how you know I was going to start these relationships. You know, with guys that I've battled you know, for the last four years and, uh, um, you know, essentially become brothers with each and every one of them. Um, it wasn't that bad because, you know, we just kind of walked in the locker room and we all kind of agreed that we had the same goal in mind. It was to win ball games, And so from there on, it's just been, you know, downhill. It's been super easy, um, a lot of fun, and I have a lot of good, good guys in that locker room with me, so. Last one to Jeff in the back. Yeah. Um, Avery's a guy that's really transparent. He come, he came here with one goal, like he said, and that was to help us win ball games. He's a really hard worker. Um, he's somebody that really you get along with him very easily. Um, he's open-minded. You're able to talk to him about pretty much anything, and he's able to relate to a lot of things as well. So um, having a teammate like Avery being able to push you and also kind of give us insight about how the inner workings of Coach Beard is and things like that kind of helps you helps us as well. So, I mean, Avery's been a great teammate so far. What's told you about the inner workings of Coach Beard? I mean, other than things that are kind of obvious about just like his whole just wanting to win and, and the hard work that comes with it. I mean, it, early we didn't exactly know how, I don't want to say crazy, but how intense and uh, his feelings are about winning. And he kind of gave us a a little preview of that before, just kind of telling us how it was going to be. And I mean, this guy just wants to win, and that's all we want to do as well. So we're we're here together. We trust Coach Beard, and we're going to do this. Brian, go ahead, last one. Avery, that, that's what I wanted to ask about. I mean, we we see this guy as this fire-breathing machine on the sideline, right? Is that what is that what it is like for this program? And how would you if a, if a, if a handful of recruits walked in there and they were like? I mean, you better be ready to work um, because, you know, like kind of the big point of this whole press conference is, is he's here to win and so are we. And, you know, it's not like we just sit around all day, um, you know, not really doing anything about it. We have a plan to win. We work out all the time. We're eating right, um, film, all sorts of stuff throughout our day to, you know, help us you know, get the edge on the opponent. And so, you know, every day it's sun up to sundown. We're working on something, whether even if it be off court relationships or hanging out with these guys, building chemistry, um, you know, everything from the ins and out. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that fire breathing dragon's the real deal. Yeah. <clears throat> Avery Jace, thank you guys.
Cool. Thank you, guys. Travis in the back Yeah, one of the first places we went when we got the uh, job at Little Rock, I think it was me and Wes Flanagan. Uh, Wes is at Auburn now, uh, one of my best friends in basketball. Uh, we were at the Peach Jam in Augusta, South Carolina, and Arkansas has basically two kind of premier teams that play in the Peach Jam. We were watching one of them and um, not necessarily recruiting any, any individual player, just kind of first chance to see Arkansas players. And, um, Avery was involved in a collision on the court. It was uh, pretty heavy, man. They had to stop the game. Uh, there was thick blood on the uh, floor. It was one of those deals where you know, everybody in the stands was looking like this. People were getting up and leaving the gym, and Avery laid there for a while, and they, they got him up. They couldn't mop up the blood with just one towel because it was so thick. So they came out, they cleaned the blood, and he's over there. And the game starts back, and the same kid's in there. Avery was back in the game. He's missing like two teeth. And I just told Wes, like, this, this will be our first offer. Uh, at Little Rock. So we offered him a scholarship there, and uh, one thing led to another. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, left UNLV to go to Texas Tech. Uh, we had talked to Avery and his family about just because of the guards we had on the team, Devin and Keenan and Naeem and some of those guys, it didn't look like we were going to uh, be able to recruit, you know, Avery at that moment and wished him the best of luck. Avery's a Division I scholarship player. He had 100 scholarship offers at least. Uh, circles back in the spring, we get a call from Avery, and, and uh, our, our situation really hadn't changed. I remember I was driving down the road, and I had so much respect for him and his dad and mom. I was like, hey, our scholarship situation really hadn't changed. And uh, he goes, no, Coach, we're, we're going to come down there, on, on, and we'll bet on ourselves. We'll get one sooner or later. And that's exactly what he did. So first player offered in Arkansas, one of my all-time favorite players. Um, just stands for everything that we're about. Uh, everything that we're about is Avery Benson. Yeah, I think that's what we benefited. That was the outcome, but not the objective. Uh, the outcome was that we have an experienced player in our locker room, be one of our captains, and can you know help the guys. We had that um, in Lubbock as well with Thomas Bransma. Uh, we had that at Angelo when Kenny and some of those guys came with us from McMurray. So it, it's a big part of building teams. You know, I think if uh, you look in professional basketball, players and staff will follow coaches. It, it, it gives you an advantage with the culture and getting things set when you have somebody that understands what you're all about. Um, but that wasn't the objective. The objective with Avery was to get a, a really good player. And the story about Avery is always sometimes a little bit misunderstood, kind of like Andrew's story to me is misunderstood. Everybody talks about the adversity he's gone through. I mean, he's one of the best players in college basketball. Andrew is. Avery, same thing. Like, it's the story of me and him and the toughness and all this. But he's a really good basketball player. Like, a couple years ago, we go down to the Garden. We played number one in Louisville. And uh, Avery's the best player on the court. And he's had those moments uh, several times through his career. So uh, yes, we're glad he's here for leadership. Yes, we're glad he's here because he's my guy. Uh, but don't get it twisted. I mean, he's at the University of Texas because he's a good basketball player. Ross in front right. Coach, another question about that Yes. We definitely want to be the first to lose balls. We definitely want to play physical. We definitely want to be a hard playing team. Yes. And I appreciate those comments about our team last year. We, we strive to do that. We strive to bring a team here to Austin that everybody's proud. You know, I want the fans that uh, when we win the game, they're, you know, they're just happy. It was worth their investment. It was worth their couple hours. I want our students to feel great about it. Um, on the nights where we run out of time from time to time, I still want our fans to have the same idea. You know, hey, guys played hard tonight. Um, last team that went undefeated was Coach Knight. That was a long time ago. So you go into the season knowing that you're not going to win every game, although that's your objective. Uh, we want our fans to have that idea, too, that the objective is to see Texas basketball every night. And a part of Texas basketball are those things you mentioned, no doubt. Jeff, at the back camera. Uh, you don't 
Yeah, we don't we don't plan on getting beat. We are, there's only a few times in our careers that we've gotten beat. We uh, we run out of time, you know, against another really good team with good players that maybe executed or hit shots or. Um, but yeah, the, the objective, you know, we're, we're not going we're not going to throw the ball up and just not come to play. You know, like if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat us. And um, you know, we certainly don't think we're better than anybody else. We have that humility that's real. Um, but you know, we're here to win. So, uh, but from time to time, the. Uh, Last game I coached a few months ago, you know, Arkansas, uh, they won the game on the scoreboard, but we, we walked away thinking we just ran out of time. We, we needed one more shot around the basket. So that's always kind of been the mindset. But I don't think that's any different than any competitor. I think uh, as a competitor, you go into the game and, you know, I just, man, if we had a little more time, we'd get this thing turned around. Bob, in front on Jace, I mean, I imagine you knew a little bit last year what he was going through trying to come back from that injury. How, how hard is that road? How much do you know about how hard it is? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the injury happened uh, on the court where we played. Um, so, you know, you don't like that. I never like when the best players are hurt. Never like it. I, um, you know, it's like you get in that NCAA tournament, you know, you get a little break on the other team. I've never considered it that. You know, I, we we want to beat that team full speed. That's just the way the sport works, you know. It's just the way it should work. It's a player's game. So you always want the players to be healthy. I remember uh, asking Shaka a few times over the years, how's Jace doing? I think I might have called him or texted him or maybe written him a letter or something. But we, there's communication. I think there might have been a few times there where we saw Jace. Maybe he wasn't playing, but we saw him in the games. So just knew knew about that. Uh, one of Jace's high school coaches, a uh, cl close friend of mine. Um, so we just knew that from afar. Then once just you start competing against him again, just seeing kind of how he was moving around the floor, um, you know, we knew he wasn't 100%. That was obvious. Um, but now getting back, and I give Warren and John Riley a lot of credit, and I give Jace the most credit because he's the one putting the work in. But I share his uh, version of his current health. You know, I don't, I don't know what 100% exactly is, but I know he's, he's moving really well on both sides of the ball. He's making all sorts of plays other than just shooting. Um, so, yeah, you just, you just pull for him. I know he's been through a lot of adversity. Um, you know, he had to fight his way back, and he fought his way back while playing, you know, like, um, we, we had a great player, Kevin McCuller, who's, who I think is a really good player. Um, you know, should be an NBA player one day. Kevin, um, you know, Kevin's deal is he, 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 he was playing basketball when he never had an off season, um, and, and it was amazing. And I think the same thing with Jace. He was just playing ball out there when he wasn't fully 100. percent So I have a lot of respect for him. Have time for two last ones, Jeff. Yeah, that's the whole thing with recruiting and, and really this transition and these players. I mean, you've got to want it. It's each individual player. They have to want to buy into what we're doing. They have to want to buy into getting better. And and sometimes when you're a veteran, uh, it just doesn't work that way. You know, like a guy like Jace could easily just say, no, this is kind of who I am and what I've done. And, you know, but, but he hasn't done that. Since the first day we were here, he was open to new things, you know, like um, playing without the ball. Uh, approaching the defensive end differently in terms of schemes and stuff. I mean, Shaka had these guys playing extremely hard. Uh, but, you know, we play the game different. The schemes are different. The, um, and so just Jace, as the other guys, they've been very open, um, very open to, to new ways of doing this. And I told Jace and those other guys, you know, I don't, don't want to change you at all. You're one of the best players in the Big 12. I just want to add things to your game. And I want you to do everything you've done great in the past at a higher level. And then maybe we can add some things to your game. Um, and Jace has been great on that. He, he will be the leader in our team in a lot of ways. He has a poise and a composure about him, second to none. I think it lot, has a lot to do with his faith. It has a lot to do with his mom. It has a lot to do with him uh, and his relationship with his dad, losing his dad um, early in life. He just has a composure and a poise and a maturity that most guys don't have. Think about it. You guys ever seen him get rattled like in a game or anything? He's, he's, uh, he's got a poise to him. And, um, you know, I, I, I want the ball in that guy's hands among other guys late in the game because I love that poise Jace has. Time for one last one. Any updates on how the student sell out situation is going? Yeah, we're working hard at it, um, just doing different things. The next thing we got scheduled is to try to get an open practice where the students can come out and see the team in a practice setting 
we're working hard on that. Um, we obviously have the exhibition game against Coach Wacker and those guys from Texas Lutheran. That's a unite the family moment. Um, so we want the students to be involved there. Um, just starting to spread the word. I think the timing of the message is always kind of important. You want to put stuff out there, but not too early or too late. So I think as we start getting closer to the first game, you know, we're going to flood it. Lots of work's gone into that. Lauren uh, has done a great job. Uh, men's basketball marketing, uh, new hire. And then everybody that's been here in the past at Texas is, is great. I and mean, there's a super team of people here, a lot of elite, talented people in the video world, the SID world, the marketing world. Um, I did have a chance to meet with the, some of the ticket office and, the, and different people in, in a group and uh, just excited that it's going to be a big team effort, you know, to try to increase attendance here this year and also increase the, the atmosphere. That's the plan. No, but I, uh, I haven't gone back and watched many of those. Like we, we take a lot of pride in the firesides just being one take. Um, we had to do a two take one time uh, because we had, we had an inaccurate statement. Um, but other than that, it's always been a one take. We, we, we take one take. Um, that might be a good thing, or it might be the reason why, you know, it's not what you think it might be. Um, but on this one, I have to admit, I, I did go back and watch it because I wanted to watch Bevo. And I thought the best thing about it to me was some of his facial expressions. And some of the times he just kind of looked at me and stuff. So I thought it was cool. Anybody that hadn't seen out there, uh, seen it out there, I, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite ones. We're so appreciative of uh, the guys at the ranch, uh, the, 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 the guys that take care of Bevo. It was a special morning. It was pretty fun to be out there. If y'all haven't been out there, that's a killer spot, too. Killer spot. Thanks a lot. Thank you, officer.